All right, hey, what's up, guys? It's Coach Mack, play fast football. I'm going to do a video today on uh, kind of a deja vu moment for me about an epiphany that I had three years ago when I first took the job at my new school and something that I was interested in trying, and I never really got the validation from it that I needed. But in reading a recent um, article on, uh, that somebody shared with me on Twitter uh, or on social media, um, it's kind of that... Uh, moment where it goes and the light bulb goes off in your head and says maybe you were kind of on to something that was the right track for your program you just have to be willing to pull the trigger all right so remember to check out uh, our sponsors GameStrat in the description box down below there's going to be a link takes you directly to GameStrat's website if you're interested uh, in a sideline replay system that is highly reliable highly affordable great customer service make sure you check out GameStrat just play football uh, digital Software taking your program to the next level. It's the only play drawing tool that I use. Any clinics, webinars, anything I do that needs play drawing, I'm going to use Just Play. Defensive Coordinator 1 in-game app that allows you to make critical in-game adjustments based on actual live in-game data that's being charted up top. All right, so now you're matching your calls with what's actually being run, and it gives you a little bit more uh, data-orientated way to make your adjustments as opposed to maybe just um, not really guessing, but... Uh, kind of just putting some things that you think together that are actually going on. The data actually proves what's going on, and you can make your adjustments a little bit easier. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps in the off-season, in-season, working on striking. You don't need a partner. You don't need anybody holding a bag or a med ball. It's just you and the ultimate striking machine. So make sure you check out Difference USA. Max Wan, which is an app that allows a head coach to streamline organization communication, messaging, Put your schedule up there, put your calendar up there, let people know when things are going to change, put workouts up there so if kids go out of town, they can see the workouts and still have the ability to do the workouts if they have access to a gym while they're out of town. You also, uh, they have features in there where your kids can compete and you can have leaderboards amongst your workouts, so make sure you check out uh, Max One. And then Dome Hats, which is the headwear sponsor for PlayFest football in the current high school that I'm at in my football program. All right, Dome has a great custom online hat builder to where you can generate and build your own hats with your logo, change colors on the panels, choose different hat styles, put writing on the back, all right, put writing on the side, change the color of the eyelids, change the color of the button up top, stitching on top. So great company. Uh, again, great customer service to uh, former Florida Gator football players. They've coached before. They understand what we go through, um, and they know what every program all right, struggles with and what every program needs. They combine those things to put together a great product, so make sure you check out Dome Hats. All right, so three years ago, all right, at the current job that I'm at, um, I was, we were struggling with our, uh, with our pattern read, pattern match stuff, and uh, I kind of had an epiphany moment to, and started thinking to myself, what if, we, um, what if we were to just spot drop, all right, and what if we, what if we just went to old-fashioned country cover three, spot dropped, everybody understood, uh, where they needed to drop to, and then we broke on the ball. We didn't really necessarily match routes, uh, so to speak. Um, we just basically broke on the ball as it was in the air, went out on the field, earned some seven on seven, tried some stuff, um, and you know, ended up at that time kind of finding out that uh, you know, probably some of the passing windows were a little bit too big. The completion percentage was a little bit too high maybe for what I was looking uh, to do, and in talking to some friends in the business and other people, I just really couldn't get the validation um, on on why we would do what I was thinking about doing. So we stayed with our pattern read, pattern match stuff, with which I absolutely love. Um, I am not saying that we are changing that, but something came out on social media today about Ohio State playing uh, more country cover three with vision and break guys, how they teach it. They even simplify it to where underneath they only talk about two zones. There's a, a hook zone and a buzz zone, something along those lines, and you're either an inside strong side hook player, weak side hook player, strong side buzz player, weak side buzz player, and simplifying it down to that and talking about how their guys drop to certain spots on the field and then they, uh, based on the quarterback's intentions, they can shuffle, pull itself on a string, um, you know, one way or the other when the shoulder moves, when the eyes move, and then break when the hand comes off the ball. And... In, in reading, I'm going to go through on the board some of the things, but in reading the article, it started talking about all the things that, that we have talked about as high school coaches in the past and a lot of things that I've talked about with the platform Play Fast Football in the past. So 
if you've watched any of our videos before, you know that we've talked about vision and brake, vision and brake uh, using six-man hot pressures, vision and brake techniques, using a backside safety as a vision and brake player. And, and basically, vision and brake kind of refers to you looking more at the quarterback and playing off a of vision. Uh, your vision is 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 on the quarterback, and you're basically playing off of his intentions or maybe even his vision. And then when his front hand comes off or the ball comes out, you are breaking on the ball. That's kind of what vision and break means. All right? Spot drop would be your old-fashioned hook to curl, curl to flat, spots on the field, inside the hash mark, top of the numbers, spots on the field that you would drop to, all right, regardless uh, you know, of, the, of the patterns being run by certain receivers, you wouldn't change the spot you drop to based on the patterns run by the receiver. You would drop to a spot and then react kind of, all right, to the patterns in that area. So you weren't really matching the patterns. You were, quote, unquote, spot dropping. All right, so when guys used to teach when I was younger and guys would teach spot dropping when I was in high school, they would put cones out there and say, okay, if you're the hook to curl dropper, I need you to drop to this cone 10 to 12 yards deep. If you're the curl flat player, I need to drop to this cone 8 to 10 yards deep. So, you know, it, it's been around forever. I don't know if it's ever fully gone away, but pattern matching became a better way to get tighter coverage. And anybody that studies uh, pattern match cover three that Nick Saban has made so famous, he talks about how in the NFL, the old-fashioned country cover three with Dan Marino and guys, they were just getting all these balls thrown into these windows right by their ear, and they had to find a better way to kind of come up with a man-free philosophy inside of a zone uh, inside of a zone package. So uh, the birth of pattern match cover three, rip list match came about, and then obviously quarters defense and to read defense and trips adjustments and all the different pattern reading, pattern matching defenses that are out there that have been so prevalent and the one that we still to this day play um, because you can get tighter coverage. All right, I, I think you can make the passing windows a little bit smaller. You can contest uh, the throws sometimes in those windows because they're smaller, a little bit easier. But let's go through uh, what the DB coach from Ohio State at a local clinic somewhere or recently at a clinic talked about why they went to vision and break spot drop stuff. All right, first off, he said it's a lot easier for them to teach. All right, he said it's a lot easier for them to teach. They could teach multiple players. They could do different circuits where they could teach players, hey, you're a hook dropper, this is what hook droppers do. Hey, you're a buzz dropper, this is what buzz droppers do. Hey, you're a third dropper, this is what third droppers do. And then they could get multiple positions figuring out how to play those spots so that they could make the defense as multiple as they wanted it by having, uh, you know, several positions be able to play the different spots. When I think about that, I think about that when I, at, at some NFL clinics that I used to go to back in the day, and guys would draw up, guys literally would draw up their, they talk about three deep stuff, all right, and they would literally draw up X's on the field, all right, kind of like this, and a coach would talk about, it doesn't really matter what position you want to talk about, the bottom line is, when you're going to play any type of in, insert, three deep insertion stuff, you know, sky buzz, cloud kick, whatever, you, you know, cloud, however you want to do it, the bottom line is you're going to end up with a player there, 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 and there. Who those players are, are irrelevant. So, you know, back in the day, I, I, would, I would listen to those NFL guys and they would talk about, you know, all the different insertion points that they had and how to get there. But at the end of the day, when the ball was snapped, you had those four underneath zones, you had those three deep zones. Guys just had to understand how to play them, and you could be as multiple as you wanted to, whether it meant dropping ends into certain spots or, you know, where changing, sending a backer and changing where the safety's rotated into. They just had to know how to play those spots. And then a lot of times you'd watch, I'd watch NFL uh, teams or games or practices, and I would see that they literally would drop the spots and then just kind of shuffle and move and then break on the ball. They were never really, you know, quote unquote, always straight pattern matching. Now I'm not saying that everybody in the NFL was doing that, don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is I was used to seeing some things done that way with some cover three stuff, all right, in, in the NFL. Less busts in coverage. It's a little bit easier. Guys, it's a little bit easier with their assignments, so they have less busts in the coverage where maybe two guys are reading patterns of somebody and one guy thinks it was this, the other guy thinks it was that, the communication's off and you bust. All right, so they found out that in playing defense this way, all right, and this is not the only way they play defense, and, and the guy makes a, a, a very uh, prevalent point 
to say that that's not all they do on defense. But he was talking about in this style of defense, they have less busts, less blow-ups in coverage, less, you know, gifts that you're giving the other team because you guys bust, all right? Talking about how with eyes on the ball, you get more turnovers. That's always been a discussion. Man versus zone, where are there more turnovers? Why are there more turnovers in certain spots, all right? And the old adage was there were more, more turnovers in zone defense because guys could actually see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands where a lot of the time in man, you were breaking, you know, you were playing a man first and then driving a man and finding the ball a little bit later. So the old argument was always that zone defenses could cause a few more turnovers and man defenses, maybe man defenses can cause tighter throwing windows, but zone defenses can cause more turnovers, pass breakups, because guys can actually see where the ball is coming from to make a break and a play on the ball. Makes sense, right? Easier versus motions. Now, with that being said, don't motions are a tricky deal no matter what your coverage is, and I don't think there's anything that is plug and play easy versus motion. It's still easy to get out leverage, and it's still easy to screw things up versus motions. But when you think about it, when you got those four underneath droppers, and you don't have to make multiple checks based on motion, and you can just worry about those guys maybe just bumping, shifting, moving, maybe you got to flood a zone, whatever it may be, it's probably a little bit easier to play to motions. But, but in having coached defense a long time in high school and also having coached offense, there is no plug-and-play to motions. I think anybody that's good with how they change things in motion, uh, how they change formations, how they change numbers and angles and leverage. Those offenses are always going to be tough. If they can do all those things and still execute, those offenses are always tough. I don't think there is a plug and play, but they mentioned how they thought it was easier with the adjustments they had to make the motions. All right, You eliminate some of the thinking going on. I don't think you're ever going to eliminate all the thinking in football. All right, We talk all the time on this website about what play fast really means. Play fast was not a tempo for us. Play fast was not you know, an offensive deal. Play fast for us was an ideology behind trying to coach kids and getting them to do things with a little bit less thinking. So whether it was you were making your coverages, using buzzwords to make them more conducive, you were dumbing them down from maybe the higher levels to make things more conducive, you were doing things on offense to make things a little bit more conducive. We used to run power strong, counter weak. Just ideas like that that made play fast football an ideology. And now... The guy, the DB coach from Ohio State, on, a, on what I read, I wasn't in attendance, was saying that they think it eliminates some of the thinking for their players. Okay? Carry over into pressures. What do you mean? We, we've carried since Michigan State, I believe, kind of was at the forefront of it. But since college teams have started running six-man hot pressures where you have two underneath defenders and three deep, and it was called a vision and break, the way I was taught it and learned it, a vision and break pressure with the two underneath defenders. Okay? You can then marry some of these philosophies into pressures where now, and I've done this before, and I have college teams that, that I won't give away who they are, but admit it to me that they have done it. You can play three under three deep without having to be match, carry, deliver. You can play three under three deep as a vision and break philosophy, and then you can go to two under three deep, hot pressures as they're known or as I call them, and you can play those as vision and break. So now, all right, it's not exactly spot drop vision and break, Okay, but the idea of, of vision and break on a quarterback's intentions and how you do that now has more carryover from your actual pattern match defenses. All right, we always had a hard time with three under three deep because we don't carry match carry deliver in our defense. We're not a Rip Liz uh, match cover three team. I feel like our quarters concepts and, and our pattern match is a little bit different and I didn't like carrying multiple pattern matches, so I never really liked playing three under three deep, and when I did play it, I played it as a vision and break. Okay? Again, you know, uh, is it the best way to play it? I don't know. Uh, if you had to argue what's better versus what... I've done it, and I also had a, a college team come in and admit and say, Coach, we've done that before. We certainly have. So, you know, sometimes it's just the validation that you need from somebody else, at, especially at a higher level, that makes something worthwhile. Okay, so a lot of times you may get an idea and you may really fall in love with the idea and think that it's good for your program, but if you can't get validation from other people, you, you end up kind of shying away from the idea because everybody makes it as if it's not feasible, not do it, not doable, I wouldn't do it that way, show me somebody else that does it that way. You know, it, it just, it's one of those deals where sometimes validation makes it worthwhile 
But I don't know if you always need that validation to go ahead and pull the trigger. But when you get it, you all of a sudden, that light bulb goes off in your head. That epiphany is like that deja vu moment to go, wait a minute, I was thinking about this three years ago and I didn't do it because I didn't really see anybody doing it. I didn't know if anybody good was doing it and I thought I was crazy. And then all of a sudden somebody like Ohio State comes out and says, yeah, we play defense this way. This is one of the things we do. And all of a sudden now it's something that says, hey, well, heck yeah. You know, I've mentioned it in other videos. You can have any concept you want. You do it, and nobody really cares. Nick Saban does it, and it's the hottest thing in football. It, it's just the nature of the beast. It is what it is. All right? You can look at it in any sport. You can look at it in any – whether it's a technique in a sport that somebody does, all right, uh, swinging a golf club a certain way. There's 80 million ways to swing the golf club. Everybody wants to swing it, you know, like this, the, the, the most technical, beautiful thing. But then when you go watch, you watch Jim Furyk win, and you watch Brendan Steele come close to winning, you know, uh, and – uh, Matt Kuchar with a flat swing, then you go back and watch Hogan and, and Bobby Jones. and other. It's just a validation to see somebody else do something and go, yeah, you know what, that, that works, it's possible. So sometimes you just need that, all right? And this article for me was exactly what we needed. At the end of the day, play fast, right? They talk about how it helps them play faster, all right? All these things help them play defense a little bit faster, which means now with less thinking, they should be able to focus more on technique and fundamentals. They should be able to focus more, all right? Even, even they talk about tackling sometimes and, and how to, you know, make things easier with less things to think about in tackling because they felt like at their level that guys miss tackles more when they're thinking about a lot of things. So eliminating busts, okay, making things a little bit easier, making them multiple so that different positions can all play and understand that concept. All right, these are all things in high school that we would all love to do because we know that our time is limited, our coaching staffs are limited, we don't have the bells and whistles that the college and the NFL guys have. So to me, this article was not only a validation, but it makes perfect sense for what we may try to do in high school. Now, am I getting away from pattern match? No, that's not what I'm saying. Am I getting away from how we play defense? No, that's not what I'm saying. But it gives me a little bit more validation and justification when I have an idea that I had that epiphany three years ago to say, maybe if we did this, it'd be easier for our kids and maybe, and then, you know, you try it and you're not sure how it works and then nobody else is doing it so they say, no, I wouldn't do it that way and then you just kind of get away from it. Sometimes you need validation. You need to see things done at a higher level. All right, I don't know if that's right or wrong. I don't know if that's good or bad. I always tell you on these videos that it's your program. You know your program. You know your facilities. You know your kids. You know your coaches. You know the answers you got. When we talk about practice plans, I always say your practice plan should be unique to you and your program to solve your problems. Okay? So, you know, I still believe that you have to handle the, the problems at your program. you got to solve the problems at your program the best way you think possible. All right, but after reading this article, I got prompted to get right on the board and do this video because this is something I've thought about several times in my career and never got gutsy enough to fully pull the trigger. We've done it before in theory. We have done some spot drop stuff. We don't really tell the kids that's what we're doing and we don't really tell other people that's what we're doing, but we've done it before in different ways. We've just never made it a um, real high uh, priority in our defense, but as soon as I, I saw my friends send me this article, and I read this article with the coach talking about why they did it and the things they were doing, right away I got up on the board and started going through the things and said, hey, that's something we talk about all the time. This makes a lot of sense. Maybe it's something we should look into. So I hope this video helps you guys. I hope it helps you, all right, look at ideas and epiphanies and, and validation and self-justification of why you may want to do things, all right? It's a really cool idea. I don't know how much it's going to catch on. If you're not a single high guy like I am not a single high guy, I don't know if you can live with it. I don't know if I can feel good against one back runs being a single high team. There's a lot of things that I need to think about, but as soon as I saw this article come out and I read it, I had to go to the board and do a video right away because a lot of it makes a ton of sense. And it's a lot of the things that we've been talking about for a long time just didn't have the balls to do it. All right? Or maybe because nobody else did it, we didn't have the balls to pull the trigger. So uh, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know uh, in the comment section what you think. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down. Always remember to subscribe. All right? Click that subscribe button. Ring that bell. Notifications. Turn the notifications on. Ring that bell. You know every time that we're going to do something. All right? As always, this channel does not function without you. I appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll catch you guys next time.